Welcome to Lesson 12b, Compressible Couette Flow, Heat Transfer. In the previous lesson, we discussed an example problem, Compressible Couette Flow, where we have flow between two plates, with the top plate moving and the bottom plate stationary. In this lesson, we'll add the energy equation to this example problem, and we'll have to deal with heat transfer, which will occur through the lower and the upper plates. We'll be able to generate expressions for the velocity and temperature fields. As a quick review of our example problem, we assume that all flow field variables and fluid properties are independent of x, time, and z, the coordinate into the page here. So all these properties and flow variables are functions of y only. I'll add here k of y, the thermal conductivity. We also made these approximations and assumptions. It turns out that without gravity, pressure is constant everywhere. Our equation one was that the shear stress, which is mu du dy, is a constant everywhere in this flow. Now let's add our energy equation. If you look back at some previous lessons, we derived several different forms of the energy equation. The one that we'll use here is a very general one, rho dh dt equal dp dt minus del qi del xi plus phi. I'll call this equation two. Now let's simplify this in the normal way. As I just mentioned, P is constant, so that term goes away. And QI is the heat flux vector with components QX, QY, and QZ. But the flow is fully developed and two-dimensional. So the only component of vector Q is QY, which is heat transfer in the Y direction. Let's expand this equation, where this intermediate equation is a mixture of Cartesian coordinates and tensor notation, but you can do some algebra on this, which I will not include here, to show that this term reduces to mu du dy squared, or since tau is mu du dy, this becomes tau du dy. Most of these other terms go away by our numbered approximations and assumptions. Steady, all variables are a function of y only. V is zero, it's 2d, nothing varies with x, nothing varies with z, and so this term and this term are the only two that remain. But we can write this one as dqy dy, since qy itself is a function only of y. Thus equation two simplifies to negative dqy dy plus tau du dy equals zero, which I'll call equation three. We can integrate with respect to y, of course. We get negative qy plus tau u, since tau itself is a constant, and this must equal some constant of integration. I'll call that four. Let's apply a boundary condition on the lower wall to find this constant. We know that u equals zero at the lower wall, and let's let qy equal qw, where we had called the lower wall w and the upper wall e in our previous lesson. So this equation becomes negative qw plus zero, since u equals zero at this lower wall, equal constant. So the constant equal negative qw, the heat flux through the lower wall, and four thus becomes negative qy plus tau u equal negative qw. Similarly at the upper wall, we'll let the heat transfer be qe. So at the upper wall then, we have negative qe plus tau capital ue, since u is equal to ue up there, equal negative qw, or rearranging tau ue equal qe minus QW. I'll call this equation five. Before I solve any further, I want to point out the physical significance of this equation. This term, a shear stress, which is a force per unit area, times a speed, is the rate of work, and work is also energy, per unit area done to the fluid by the moving upper wall. It's work that's required to overcome the friction on that upper plate. The term on the right represents the net rate of heat, again energy, per unit area, lost by the fluid. In other words, QE must be greater than QW to overcome this work that's added to the fluid. And these two must be equal. In other words, all the work done by the upper wall to overcome friction must either increase the internal energy of the fluid or come out as heat. This is a nice physical summary of what's going on in this equation for our compressible quet flow. But here, the problem is steady, so internal energy cannot build up in time. Also, del del x of anything is zero, so internal energy cannot increase in the x direction. So this cannot happen. 
Therefore, all of the work that has been added has to come out as heat. All the work done at the top wall on the fluid, the left-hand side, must be transferred out of the fluid through the walls. That's our physical explanation for equation 5. Now let's try to solve this problem for u of y and t of y. Our equations are tau equal mu du dy, which is equal to a constant. That was our equation 1. And I'll rearrange equation 5 as negative qy plus tau u equal negative qw. Equation 1 comes from the momentum equation. Equation 2 comes from the energy equation. Recall Fourier's law. In this case, the 1d form of it, negative qy equal k dt dy. Let's plug that in here. k dt dy plus tau u equal negative qw. And equation 1 is tau equal mu du dy. These two equations are a coupled set of two ordinary differential equations. They're coupled because mu is a function of temperature. Thermal conductivity k can also be a function of temperature. And so temperature indirectly comes into this equation as well as this equation. I'll write down that in general mu equal mu of t and k equal k of t. So stepping back we see that we have two equations. We also have two unknowns, u and t, and everything else is a function of temperature, with tau being a constant and qw being another constant. So theoretically, we should be able to solve this. How do we solve? Well, we can try it analytically, which I'll do in a moment, or we can use numerical technique, such as Runge-Kutta, where we can march from the lower wall to the upper wall, for example, solving these two equations simultaneously. Let's tackle the analytical solution. I'll rewrite this top equation using this lower equation, k dt dy plus mu du dy u equal negative qw. Now hold on to your hats because we're going to do some fancy algebra here. Since tau is mu du dy, we can write mu as tau over du dy and plug that in here for this mu. We can also write this term as d dy of u squared over 2. Let's also divide every term by mu. So this equation becomes k over mu dt dy plus d dy u squared over 2 equal negative qw over mu, but mu is tau divided by du dy, since tau equal mu du dy. That's how we got these terms instead of mu. Well, now we're in a form where we can integrate. We'll integrate from y equals 0 to y equal y. And I apologize to the true mathematicians here that I didn't change the variable. But this becomes the integral of k over mu dt dy dy. And this integral is simply u squared over 2, evaluated from 0 to y. And since both qw and tau are constants, they come out of the integral. And we just get u, again, from y equals 0 to y. Now let's apply boundary conditions at the lower wall where u equals 0 and t equal tw at y equals 0. At any y, in other words, the upper limit in these terms, u is just what we're calling u and t is just what we're calling t. So we can rewrite this equation as the integral from t equal tw to t equal t, k over mu dt plus u squared over 2 equal negative qw u over tau. I'll call that equation 6. Keep in mind that since k and mu are functions of temperature, we keep them inside this integral. This equation 6 is our answer, except that we don't know qw or tau. So let's apply boundary conditions at the upper wall, namely u equal ue and t equal te at y equal capital H. Thus, at the upper wall, the integral goes from tw to te, and the velocity squared term becomes ue squared over 2. And then the right-hand side is the same, except u is now ue. Thus, we can solve for the constant qw over tau from this equation. qw over tau is negative 1 over ue times ue squared over 2 plus our integral. And I'll call this equation 7. Let's pause and think about what we've done. If we know k and mu as functions of temperature, we should be able to integrate this. We know ue, so therefore, we can calculate qw over tau for a given fluid moving at a given speed with these temperatures. We then plug equation 7 into 6. In other words, plug in qw over tau. Therefore, equation 6 gives us u as a function of t. This is essentially our solution. 
but it's a little tricky since we have to do it implicitly. Since equation 1 told us that tau equal mu du dy, dy is 1 over tau mu du, which we can integrate to get y equal 1 over tau, since tau is a constant integral from u equals 0 to u at some general y location, mu du. This is equation 8. But again at the upper wall where y equal h, u equal ue, so h is equal to 1 over tau integral from 0 to ue of mu du, or rearranging tau is 1 over h integral of 0 to ue mu du, which I'll call equation 9. We're almost done, we have all these equations, but here's the procedure to actually calculate u of y and t of y for given values of tw, te, ue, and the functional forms of k and mu as functions of temperature. If we know all these, the procedure is to first solve equation 7 for the constant qw over tau, use equation 6 to get temperature as a function of u, and I'll note on the side, therefore mu and k also as functions of u. Use equation 9 to get tau, which we can now do because mu is a known function of u, and then finally use equation 8 to get y of u, which we should now also be able to do since mu is a known function of u from step 2. And then in the end, finally, we rewrite y of u as u of y. And from step two, we can also get t of y. Thanks, Professor. I'm sure glad you warned us. I did have to hold on to my hat that whole time. <laughs> You're welcome, Dud. Well, that's as far as I'm going to go in this lesson. I usually give a homework problem where we go through this procedure for a given fluid with known functions k and mu of t. So I'll leave that for homework. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.